Now today we'll be showing on how to test and replace a torque converter clutch solenoid valve. Let me show you where it's located on the vehicle. Of course it's attached to the transmission so just to give you another vantage point of course the top of the engine and look toward the bottom right there that's where the solenoid lives and I'll give you some pointers on how you can track the uh, the solenoid valve on your specific vehicle so let's go ahead and remove it now you can test this valve while it's still on and attached to the vehicle I'm going to first remove it and show you how to test it on the bench obviously it will be a lot easier for you to see exactly on how you can perform these tests now as you can see it's a very tight fit I'll do my best to keep my hand steady all that I have here it's a quarter inch size ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket on the end and I'm just placing of course the socket right over the fastener and I'll give you a different shot in a second now of course the room being so tight I want to create a little bit of a longer extension this can be rather tight this one fastener so what I have here is just this happens to be a 9 16 of an inch socket and with a small extension and I'll place it over the end of the ratchet this will give me a longer handle to get this loose okay now using that extension was the exact way or the precise way I was able to loosen up this fastener okay without using that extension it was just really really tight and I just couldn't loosen loosen up the, uh, the fastener here now these can tend to be pretty darn tight and I promise you'll have a much better view in a moment once I get this out and now I'm just going to try and rotate the body up with a flathead screwdriver that's because these can tend to be very very tight they have a number of o-rings on them Go. it's nice and loose and now I can simply pull out the valve okay so as you can see the solenoid has three o-rings this provides a very good fit and prevents any transmission fluid to be lost and if you take a look on the opposite end there's a screen now you just want to make sure that screen is completely free of any debris if it is clogged up, of course, it will affect the function of this little valve. Very, very simply, inside the torque converter, there's something called the lockup clutch. And this little valve controls the amount of fluid, the fluid pressure that's applied and released to this lockup clutch. Very, very simple. And of course, the torque converter just transmits engine torque and power to the transmission. Now if you do need help locating where this valve is, is on your vehicle, a couple things I can, uh, I can point out. Number one is do a Google image search. A lot of times you can quickly pick up where the valve lives specifically on your vehicle. Option two is to purchase a repair manual specific for your vehicle. A lot of times if you can't dig them, dig them up online, you can purchase them a lot of times on eBay for under 10 bucks. Option three is to visit a form specific with your vehicle. A lot of times you'll find uh, someone that just knows the vehicle inside and out. So there's two techniques we can apply to test this valve. The first one is using a digital multimeter. If you do not have one of these, an absolute must, especially if you plan on doing your own auto repair. This happens uh, to come from Amazon. I'll include a link in the description box below if you do need a digital multimeter and uh, they run for less than $20. You can do so many different tests on almost any sensor on your vehicle plus even stuff in your house. So it's, it's really a nice little tool to have. Now the multimeter comes with two leads, a black lead and a red lead. And if we take a look at the end, the connection point for this valve, we have two prongs. So all that we're doing is we're taking the leads from the multimeter and touching the prongs. So the red lead could touch this right prong or the left prong. Doesn't matter which one you touch, you will see a reading if this is in good working shape. So if you take a look, you have a number of different functions. You just want to choose the omega symbol. That's the ohms or resistance test. Now what we should see here a good reading is on average between 15 to 25 ohms. Now if you do this test, 
These are just alligator clips to make the job a little bit easier. You don't have to use these, but it just makes it a little bit easier on my end. Um, so again, one lead goes to the right, the other one goes toward the left. Does not matter if the lines cross, so you just won't see a reading. Uh, but again, where did I put that lead? Okay, so we should see 15 to 25 ohms. If we don't see anything here, then the valve is bad. Or sometimes the reading may be incredibly, incredibly high. But let's see what we have here. Okay, so it looks like we have around 22 to 23 ohms. So this is in very good working condition. Now again, if you do this test, you don't see a reading here, or sometimes it's incredibly high, then this is no longer in working shape and it needs to be replaced. If, one point I will say is if you don't see a reading, just make sure you have a good connection. Okay, so as you can see, it does make a lot of difference. You need a good connection on these, uh, on these points. So that's the first thing we can do. Now the second thing we could do is test the function of the valve. So let me just clean this up very, very quickly. So in other words, inside, inside the valve here, there's an opening, as you can see, two openings. And if we apply power to this valve, this should move back and forth. The little plunger in here should move back and forth. Now, how do you do that? Well, you can use your car battery, or in my case, I happen to have one of these RC battery packs that push out pretty close to 12 volts. So all that we're doing is taking the power from here and then applying it to here. That's it. And again, if you are doing this on your vehicle without removing it, you should hear a clicking noise. So let's just, just verify. Let's pretend this is still in the vehicle, just so you can get an idea on what this is supposed to sound like. Now again, I'm using these alligator clips. Now in this case, you do not want the, these leads to cross. You will melt the wires, you can ruin the battery. If this is in working shape and you cross the, uh, the leads, then you can destroy the valve. So very, very careful when you do this. So what I, plan, what I, end, uh, what I typically do is I take one alligator clip, place it over the lead, and then push the boot all the way down as far as I can. Let me bring this a little bit further down. Okay, place it here, and then with the second lead, I barely touch it, okay? So the black lead is pushed all the way down, the red lead, I'm barely touching it. And then we just hook this up to the battery. So let's first see, uh, or let's first hear if we hear a clicking noise, okay, which we do. Now let me show you what's going on here. So take a look through that viewing window. You see that valve moving? So this verifies the valve is working correctly. It's a very easy test to do. Both of these tests are very, very easy, but this can really pinpoint if you have a problem with the valve. Now that being said, let's go ahead and reinstall it. And if you do have a check engine light on your vehicle, I'll show you on how you can go ahead and delete it. And before we reinstall it, the other thing I just wanna show this is the harness connector. This is what plugs into that valve. You just want to make sure, if I can angle this right, it's very tight obviously here. There we go. You just want to make sure that everything is completely clean. There's no oil, dirt, debris. Everything looks to be in fantastic shape. Okay? So now I'm just reinstalling the harness connector. Make sure it clips. Now you don't need to over tighten these. Typically they're around 10 foot pounds from the factory. Okay. Then of course the very last step is to erase any engine codes you may have or trouble codes. If you don't have a scan tool you can always go to your local auto parts store if you are looking to purchase one which is nice to have if you plan on doing your own auto repair. I'll include this one that uh, I purchased off Amazon. It can read trouble codes, not only for the engine, the transmission, the airbags, and the ABS. So it's a nice system. It's not too expensive. But ultimately, you would just go down to here, and you would erase any codes in here. And that's it. So I'll just take it for a quick test drive, make sure everything is okay. 
and we're in good shape. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.